I warned you there were a lot of components to the SD-WAN architecture. We're still not done stepping through them, but we are getting close. And we wanted to break it up like this because, yeah, there's a lot to take in. So let's focus now on two really important ones, and that's the overlay management protocol and VPNs. So the overlay management protocol, or OMP, is going to be the key control plane mechanism for us in the SD-WAN. This is going to be propagating things like the prefixes that are at the different WAN sites, the next hops, the crypto keys, the policy information that we're pushing down. So OMP really is a critical protocol to convey all of that important control plane that we need. Now, this is going to be transmitted from vSmart to vSmart controller, of course, and also, of course, from vSmart to vEdge. The communications, remember, are secured, and that is done with DTLS or TLS, and we'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. And I left this as the last thing to discuss here because a lot of the Cisco and or Viptela literature start talking all this like, oh, it's just like BGP and your vSmart controller is a route reflector. Well, wait a minute now, back up the truck. It's not a route reflector. The point they're trying to make is it would act like a BGP route reflector for the BGP similar protocol of OMP, but note, this is not BGP. The vSmart controller is not a route reflector. All of this technology works great with BGP, by the way, but you know, you will see these comparisons made. And I have talked to students that are confused and they think it is BGP that is doing the transport for this control plane intelligence. But no, it is a brand new invention from Viptela and it is the OMP, the Overlay Management Protocol. Now, I just had to show you this. This is the patent for OMP from Viptela. And you got to check out this abstract. You ready? It starts off incredibly succinct. A method for creating a secure network is provided. Now, you ready for this next sentence? The method comprises establishing an overlay domain to control routing between overlay edge routers based on an underlying transport network wherein said establishing comprises running an overlay management protocol to exchange information within the overlay domain in accordance with the overlay management protocol defining service routes that exist exclusively within the overlay domain, wherein each overlay route includes information on at least service availability within the overlay domain and selectively using the service routes to control routing between the overlay edge routers, wherein the said routing is through the underlying transport network in a manner in which said overlay routes is shared within the overlay edge routers, but not within the shared overlay uh, transport network via the overlay management protocol. <sighs> Can you believe that? Aren't you glad I'm teaching the course and not this person? All right. Anyways, um, the overlay management protocol. Now, you know, everything there is to know about it right from, as they say, the horse's mouth. So OMP key ingredient. Now let's talk about VPNs. It's so interesting because VPNs here are really utilized like VRFs. Yeah, we know virtual routing and forwarding tables do this great segmentation for us at layer three, and it can ensure that there's this independent or this exclusive routing table for the VRF. Well, that's exactly what the VPNs are doing for us inside of the SD-WAN solution. We got the segmentation thanks to the VPN and we can have these VPNs utilizing their own routing information for forwarding. Now, something else to realize is that on your vEdge devices, each interface is going to be belonging to one single VPN. So we can't take an interface and attach it to multiple SD-WAN VPNs. 
there is going to be a VPN number. And this is often referred to as the label, and it's encapsulated into the packets. This number is from 0 to 65535, but be careful. Two of these are well known and reserved. There's VPN 0, which is the transport VPN. This is going to be the interfaces of the wide area network infrastructure, and the transport VPN is key that it exists so that we can have those DTLS protections on the traffic. The other reserved VPN is the 512 VPN. 512 is the management VPN. So this is going to be doing out of band management. This VPN is completely ignored, as you might guess, by the overlay management protocol. Then we have our service side VPNs, and Cisco strongly recommends that we stick with the numbering between 1 and 511 for these. So notice what they're doing. Zero's reserved, we start numbering at 1, we go up to 511, and then 512 is reserved. That should give us plenty of VPN labels. No need to go above 512, but it's great to know that we could if absolutely necessary. So how does this all look on a typical V-Edge device? Well, let's take a look at that. So here you can see on the left-hand side, VPN2. Now we know from the labeling that this is one of our service side VPNs. There's interface 3 and interface 1 in this VPN, and these interfaces connect to the local network, our users, yeah. Remember, the service side VPN is for the data traffic to transit the WAN of our wonderful users. On the other side of this vEdge device, you can see I have interface 2 and interface 0, and they're in VPN 0. We know this is the reserved transport VPN, and they're going to be making sure we have those wonderful DTLS connections for the secure transmission of control plane information. And then, of course, we have the management VPN out of band management capabilities here. So that's how this overlay management protocol and these very critically important VPNs play into the equation with the SD WAN. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it's time next for a little lab time.